But here we are live with Minu Marielle in Bali, my favorite place in the whole wide world. I'm a little bit jealous. Tonight we are celebrating our 90th Pearl of Wisdom, 90th Pearl of Wisdom. Tonight will be about flowing in flow. I'm very excited about this one. Manu is going to share the seven moves to find your flow and how you continue to flow in your flow. So I think this is something we're all familiar with, but we want to go a little deeper tonight and then work with these seven moves to not just find it, but then to stay in it. That's really what it's all about. So welcome to everyone for joining tonight for our 90th Pearl of Wisdom. Now, one of the things I love most about tonight's Pearl of Wisdom is where it's coming from. Yes, this wisdom flows through Manu Marielle, and she is in Bali of all places tonight. And uh, we actually met in Bali so many years ago. I think it's now been like 11. Um, it, it was just a magical meeting. And that just that's what happens when you're in Bali, for those of you who may not have had the chance to go. So tonight, we are going to have this beautiful wisdom that's going to be brought forth from Minu to you. And we are going to be able to find out how these seven moves will be brought forth so that you can work with this flowing energy and continue to flow in your flow. Very uh, fun indeed. I think it's going to be a very fun night. Um, Minu was showing me her office in Bali and I was like, okay, this is crazy. It's so beautiful. And Minu is joining us live right now. So, oh my goodness, I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel very grateful. Everything is open from all sides and, you know, there's a nice cool uh, breeze and the sound of rain. I don't know whether you can hear it or not, but um I have my headphones on, flowing in well, flow. We can't, we can't hear the rain, but I can imagine it. And those monsoons in Bali are just insanely beautiful. So I wish we could hear that rain, but you sound loud and clear. So I'm really excited about this 90th Pearl of Wisdom tonight, Minu. Yes, me too, me too. I think we've done something on flow, but really having the seven moves to find your flow and continue to flow in your flow. I'm excited to share. Awesome. Well, everyone get ready, get your pen and paper and here we go. Great, thank you. You know, the first uh, move is flow itself. And what is flow? Flow is about really about moving along, um, you know, steadily and continuously either in a current or in a stream. You know, that's really the dictionary meaning of flow. So finding your flow and then continuing to flow in your flow is really about that steadiness and continuous movement that feels like flowing. It has a feeling of being frictionless, almost. Now, this one is interesting. You know, so often what we do is we give the power of our ability or our inability to be in flow to outside circumstances or to other people or to stuff that might be going on within us. It could be health-related or relationship related. And it's like, you know, this gets me out of my flow. And the, the key thing is, you've heard me say this before, that we are born with three things. We are born with choice. We are born with dignity. And we are born with our own unique mastery. That puts us at the source of our life. So if you are getting out of flow, where, you know, that, that steadiness and continuous moving along, experience is being interrupted. It is, it is a choice that is made by you. Now, when I was just sharing this concept, and you know, the person I was sharing it with said, well, what if you're walking and you trip and fall? You know, uh, How can you say that it is my choice? I just tripped and fell. 
So sure, my study, study moving along experience is interrupted. I get that. I get that. So there's a physical interruption. And there is a whole lot to you in addition to the physical stuff. You can make it mean, and you can get very consumed by, I've tripped and fallen, and I've had this issue, and I've had that issue. And you can actually acknowledge that this has occurred. It, it hurts, and I've got to get it dealt with. And within yourself, you remain in that moving along steadily, continuously. As if you are in a current. Now, this piece about moving along or moving out steadily and continuously in a current or a stream refers to the context of you. What is the vibe that you have created? So, for example, you know, when I when I worked with this, I said, if I'm to apply the seven moods to finding my flow and continuing to flow in my flow, I actually want that aligned to my resolve. And I'm resolved that humans and humanity ex expect and accept miracles as their norm. And they, they do so with Jekyll, joy, ease, grace, omnipresence. So that's my resolve. Now in that context, what I want is whatever I am, a current, I create the current that supports me to flow in my flow towards this resolve. And it is my resolve that actually creates the quality of that current. And sometimes, you know, the current may be strong and, I've, and sometimes I would want to add some paciness but it's coming from my resolve. That's what I chose. So now finding my flow, you know, so the move here is one of steadiness. You know, where you actually look for where in your life or what it is that you are engaged in that has you feel that steady continuously moving along to it. Now, we can plan it, and we often do that with particular projects. And I, what you can also engage in is really look at where in your life this has showed up before. And I just want to check with you, Catherine, the rain is really hard, and it is extremely noisy outside. But can you hear me clearly? Okay. I can't hear myself very well. <laughs> and I'm sitting right in front of a pond. So, you know, there is an additional dollop of rain going into the pond. So, okay. So the move here is that, that moving along steady, continue, steadily and continuously. That's the move. So for me to to look at that, it was like okay, I just have to, I just need to create like a treasure trove of times in my life where this flow experience was present. So flow itself is the mood. So I started looking at you know where in my life I have had this experience of moving along steadily and continuously. And what I was surprised about was, you know, I, I did it physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, socially, and environmentally. It just gave me a good access to a whole collection of my life experiences and interactions. And I had a very specific agenda to create my treasure trove where I have actually amassed you know, a, a, a collection of experiences that I can dip into anytime that gets me to find my flow and flow in my flow. 
And that's what this first move is actually about. You know, so I would say to get going with this, take your time and create your treasure trove where you are flowing in your flow. Moving along steadily and continuously. Okay. Now, what I, the way I access it for myself, I've moved from, you know, various homes, various cities, various countries, um, you know, and even when you move in India, it's a very different culture. When you move from the north, when I moved from the north to live in the south with my parents, I was quite little and I was six years old. And, um, you know, there, it was a very completely different culture. The language was different. I never spoke English or Tamil. I only spoke Hindi and that nobody else spoke that there. You know, so even looking back as, as young as six, you know, there was something that I did with, okay, I, I, I took to um, study, you know, because that's where I got attention from my mom and she just supported me to really pick up English and, um, you know, become more accepted by the teachers and not treated as someone very special who just, you know, couldn't communicate very well. So I found something that became my anchor, you know, even at his youngest day, as a way of finding that steadiness and continuous flowing feeling. I looked at other times in my life where I, where I moved either to a new different school or to a different town or where there was a whole collection of um, new friends that required to be done, to be you know, brought together. And I found that I was actually implementing that strategy that I created when I was six of finding an anchor and then really working with that rather than get allowing myself to get very overwhelmed or pulled in multiple directions. The interesting thing that, and that's what I use, uh, you know, people use different strategies. It's great to find your own. I was never into appeasing or pleasing people just for the sake of it. I just wasn't. So right from the very young age, uh, my connection was really connect, reconnecting to me where I felt the sense of safety. And that was an important aspect for me to get into the rhythm of my flow and then be able to let go in trust required me to know that this area I'm really quite good at. And then I could go and learn many new things when I knew that I had a mastery of one. That was a strategy that I feel. It's not the strategy, but just it's great to find your own, you know, because then you can replicate that. So even something like here I am, it was sort of drizzling this morning. And I mean, like it's, 9.44 in the morning here, right? So it was drizzling this morning. So it was fine. I thought it would be really beautiful to have the session outside. And I allowed my team to work in the boardroom where they were actually quite willing to work outside. So now they're in the midst of their meeting. I can't use the boardroom. And the sound is really loud because it's raining. It's raining so hard. And here we are moving along steadily and continuously. You know, um, in a current, and a current is the this, you know, the ninetieth pearl of wisdom, which is very much in line with um, what I want to share as wisdom for people to expect and accept miracles as their own. The magic of what is what I'm experiencing here is, you know, Balinese people in the morning always engage in prayer, so there is light, fire. So we have the presence of the fire element quite strongly here, destroying that which doesn't serve and, and transmutating to a new state of flowing in flow. Water dollops and bucket loads of it, which washes away the debris and brings flow. So here we are doing the session. You know, air um, 
even as I'm talking, that, that the air element activated removes clutter and brings focus. And there is so much greenery around here, like lush green stuff. The earth is rejoicing in what is going on. So we have the earth element putting a stake in the ground of flowing in our flow. And we are having this session. I was seriously contemplating that we might have to cancel it. And I, there was no need to do that. So what happens is, you know, just by what I'm sharing here, um, and many of you have heard me say this, you go through a cycle of from data to information to um, uh, to knowledge, to wisdom, to knowing. When you get into your, the groove of your flow, when you start experiencing that, this journey from data to knowing happens very fast. So utilize these seven moves and work with each of them. Take your time in working with them so that you do go from data to knowing in the context of flowing in your flow. A very, a, a perfect approach to, you know, living your life through this year of illumination. Now, the second move. The second move is, is glow, G-L-O-W. And what is glow or glowing? Glowing is about giving out a steady light. And it's a, it's a light that you give out without a flame. You know, it's a, it comes from within. It truly is the expression of your illumination. It is, in fact, the expression of that divine speck of conscious light that is lit within you. And it is this spark of light that brings about that motivation to live your life and come along. And the moment that spark goes away, then life, the gift of life, also stops. So this move is about giving out a steady line. So if you have found the flow and you're moving along steadily and continuously, uh, you already know that there is, there is that speck of the light of the creator within you. You can be sharing yourself in your creation as the creator. Creation doesn't necessarily mean creating a sculpture or, or a, a work of art or anything specific. When you own, this is what I found when I worked with this particular mood. It literally called me to own my presence as a creator. So as a creator, I create every moment. And I also create Whatever my experience is at that moment, I create the meaning if I choose to give it, or I also create my choice of not giving meaning. This interesting, this particular move of glow or glowing move is about coming from a space of knowing and sharing your inner life. Now, when I say sharing your inner life, where there is light, there is no darkness. So even if you are in a, in, in a difficult place and it feels all very dark around you, you can still choose to find something that illuminates you, something that feels, makes you feel lighter. And you just grab onto that and start sharing that. The lightness of being will, will return. With that lightness of being, you automatically start glowing. Now, just like I talked about finding flow in your own unique way uh, of getting started with flow, flowing in flow, just like mine was, find one area and really become quite an expert at that. And then I can experiment uh, quite freely and readily 
um, I, with, with regards to growing, it is about creation. You finding your presence and expressing yourself as the creator. As some of you who are in, the, in my business collective here have heard me say that we can be in creation or consumption. Something I learned from my one of my coaches a long time ago, that it literally you can be in creation or consumption. And consumption is instant gratification. Creation is the ongoing uh, fulfillment. And we are meant to be creator. We are meant to be creating. After all, we have that speck of consciousness that is a part of the creator. So we each have a creator within. That is the glow that we have. So you find yourself when you are with people who just are, are in a very negative spiral. You know, after a while, you can't see them even. You just experience the vibe of negativity. And in amidst all of that, they, they still, as long as they are breathing, they still have that conscious, this consciousness creation part within them. So all that is, that, that is to do, you know, all that you are to do in that environment is have them find that spark within themselves. You know, and then they can take it from there. Often we go and save people. Often we go and, you know, give the solution to someone. But really, when it's, when you're in the realm of flowing in flow and you're looking for that move that you can, you can support this person with so they can step into their flow, it's really about reconnecting them to their spark. So they can move forward. Now, in this case, what I did for myself, I have an I have a whole collection of treasure trolls. You know, so I do have my glow treasure trolls, which is really it is just the turning point in my life, where the before situation was deep negative darkness. What did I? What occurred? What is it that I chose to do that got me out? of that and I started giving out my steady light and got, got me glowing. So for here, to find the, find the glow treasure that you already possess, go back down memory lane and go to the darkest moments of your life. The fact that you're here today and you are breathing, you know, and you had many moments of, you know, inspiration. The fact that you're here today, you did find your glow, even in those darkest moments. And all you're doing here is finding that which flips your switch from deep darkness to, a, to giving out a steady light and glowing, illuminating in all, with all your might. So I found something very interesting when I looked at my life, right? Um, it, it was not something I expected, um, you know, except it was great to discover it. So the, in, the, in those times, you know, many of you have heard me say that uh, I went through a time in my life where I was married to my childhood sweetheart and there was a lot of domestic violence that was going on. And at work, I would experience, like as if I was, it was, I was in heaven. And I would come home and it was all very unpredictable. And often, um, at least two to three times a week, it was really didn't, um, I used to call it soul destroying. Nothing destroyed was soul, by the way. That was just a phrase I used at the time. Um, but it, it felt deeply, um, it destroyed my confidence. So I went to one particular moment, which I had such a huge achievement 
that I had, I had, a, I had achieved at work, and I so wanted to share it at home. And I started sharing it home. I don't know what happened. One thing led to another. Instead of a celebration, which I'd actually made a celebration today, instead of a celebration, it actually became a very aggressive, violent evening. And I remember going going to bed, and I decided to pick up a book. And it was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And at that point, there was great sadness in me. But I found, and I just opened a page and I started reading it. I don't even remember what I read, you know, but I really, it enriched me. I felt enriched in that moment. And it was a very powerful thing that really got me back into the state of glow, giving out my giving out the steady light without a flame. It became a go-to place for me, the Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. That was my motivation book that I would go to often. I would just literally open a page. It is that experience of working with that book during my darkest moment finding this very simple strategy that would snap me out and get me into this really sharing my my inner light because I started I found the light within me I was able to share it that it taught me a way of writing I didn't know it was teaching me a way of writing but it taught me a way of writing where and you can do that in any of my books you can literally open a page and in that page, you'll get something of value. You know, I call it, it gave me the toilet book strategy of writing. <laughs> and it came from those moments in my life. And I literally only reconnected the dots when I was, you know, recapping the seven moves to find your flow for a pearl of wisdom. So you will have yours, you know, you will have yours. Just know the fact that you're here and you're doing this exercise, you're in a safe container to go to the darkest moment in your life and discover what is it that you did that took you out and put you into a state where you were giving out a steady life. You were plugged into your inner life and you were blown. Very important move to flow and flow. The third one, the third move is love. Love, as you've heard me say many times, is an amplifying frequency. I heard somewhere, I think it was Christine Sheldon, uh, I heard her, her mention it, or I don't know where, that one thought of love that you may have and it could be about anything but that thought of love one thought of love one touches 170,000 people vibrationally you know it is a very powerful mood so if you find yourself in a very low mood or very, very, you know, out of thought, just start reconnecting to what it is that you love in the moment. Even if you find one, the fact that vibrationally it touches 170,000 people those 170,000 energies start giving that love back to you. And if you spent a minute, I mean, you know, literally, uh, in, in one, one second, I can probably think of like, you know, at least eight or nine people or situations that I love. You can imagine what's possible. Every time you give out love as a thought, and that's why I say to people, look, when you're talking about flowing in your flow, find what you love in you. Find just one thing. 
and you start, you touch 170,000 people with each thought. Multiple thoughts, you've multiplied that multifold. It is an amplifying frequency. It comes straight back at you. Rampage of gratitude is great. Love, it amplifies it even more. Goes even further. I often say to people, this is when I do the exercise around money, there is so much apology that I hear around money. And it's like one money itself is a very powerful force. And then it's like your that apology is like, you know, you're taking away love from money. And money is a gift from God given into our hands to make this planet a place of pure love and joy. And how about having that multiply? with that energy of love. How is the power that money already has? And I know I'm digressing a bit, but when I went into the space of love, I realized, oh, there's so much negative stuff that has been done with money because there are so many people that actually talk about, well, I, you know, it isn't about money or I hate, I hate money even. So there you go, you know, you're taking away love from it. Money by itself is very powerful. And you say it with great passion and love for yourself when, when these declarations about how their people hate money is made. It just develops this very negative command and control type. It becomes that kind of a force. It doesn't need to be that way anymore. So just know you are human, you are love. That's who you are. Keep that power as yours, because you are human. You don't have to find love within you by finding validation from someone else. You love you. You are love. So if you feel stuck, you feel you want to snap out of it, just think. Love. What is it that you love? And even those, those thoughts start to give you back the vibe of love. From those, each thought, 170,000 people. It is Rampage of gratitude is powerful. When you go on a rampage of love, acknowledgement of love, I mean, like literally powerful will feel minuscule. It is the transmutation force that you possess within you just by the virtue of being human. Flowing in your flow, the love move is a very important move. The fourth one is an amplification of love. It is, I call it the, it, what the, the phrase that came to me was truly mad and deeply. So what is it that you truly, madly, and deeply love? Even if it is, you know, like Catherine's love for Bali. And if you can't find anything in your present moment, it's okay to go down the memory lane and find a moment in your life where you felt truly madly and deeply in love. Or find something. It could be that expression, it could be a photograph, it could be, you know, the time a child was born, or, um, you know, it could be anything. Find one thing. And because it is one of the moods that gets you flowing in flow, it literally is like, you know, you are you may be in a, in in a in a room like ecstatic dancing. I think of when I come to Bali, 
and there's this music going on and we can observe it and watch it and you know the moment you put your step into the dance floor and you allow your your body to move with the music it can't keep going for 90 minutes it doesn't matter what your scale of fitness is the truly madly deeply move is like that love in itself amplifies when you go into the truly madly deeply it's electrifying if i was to ask you right now many of you are taking notes if i was to ask you right now just write down three things that you truly madly deeply love unapologetically declare them acknowledge them write them down for the rest of this pearl of wisdom you will keep thinking of one or two other it's it's a dream generator strategy by the way of finding your flow and flowing in your flow acknowledging truly what is it that you truly madly deeply love again this is such an exciting pearl of wisdom because it literally each one is a beautiful treasure trove that you can be building up you know so i do have a truly madly deeply treasure trove and there are many 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 things in it and i'm so fortunate to be a grandma so every day there's a whole collection of stuff that goes into it and the best part is truly madly deeply experience can happen anywhere it can happen online it could happen to a book it could happen in your imagination it doesn't matter whatever it is you know if you can think it it has vibrations it is real you are part bring anything and everything to life i said you are the creator and with your thoughts you create so how about working with your thoughts in such a way that you are creating the truly madly deeply experience and it can keep being generated and if you acknowledge that you have the miracle land you start seeing so much of the truly madly deeply creation that make your heart sing expecting and accepting miracles to come to your home jago is omnipresent joy even to it i really love this pearl of wisdom <laughs> and it's the big 90 the fifth one is the self love leverage so by the time you get to the fifth one you already have been you're giving out the steady light which is your inner light you're moving along steadily and continuously in a in a current in a stream you started sharing the amplifying frequency of love and you've acknowledged an this an experience in the electrifying experience of truly madly deeply in love here with the fifth one you turn all of that focus into you and you really look at what's within you you completely love and adore what about you you completely love and adore this is where you go into the the layer the looking at the the full spectrum way physically mentally emotionally spiritually socially and environmentally focus is on you what is about you you completely love physical mental what about you you completely love in terms of your intellect in terms of your thought thought what about you you completely love in terms of your emotion 
And what about you? You completely love in the context of the spirit of you. What about you? You completely love in how you show up and the social dynamics that you facilitate. What about you? You completely love in the kind of kind of environment you put yourself in, or you co-create. There are many things I found physically and certainly in terms of my intellect was an interesting one. You know, the way in which I think, the way in which I convert my thoughts into belief, the way, I'm pro the way in which I'm proactive about it was very powerful. And it is then that I got that aha, loving of myself really does provide a very unique leverage. So just as I was looking at what about me mentally that I love, you know, it, it is the way I think, the way I'm open to a whole variety of perspectives. And I, I don't feel I have to follow anything until I'm clear that that's the way I choose to move forward. I like all of that. And what I saw was this beautiful relationship I have to understanding my thoughts and their role in the experience I have in my life actually provides me with a unique leverage. It basically means I can change any belief I want because it gave me an understanding that a belief is only a thought that you think a lot. It's a thought that you keep thinking. So if I want a new experience of life, and it is our beliefs that we often give us our experience of life because they have their own vibrational field that has a direct impact on us, I don't have to go heavy duty on how am I going to change my belief. I just find a thought that is more akin to the kind of experience I want in life. And just think it a lot. That in itself will shift my belief. And lo and behold, I will have a completely different experience of life. My point of saying this is, in doing this exercise, looking at the lay of the land, about what aspect of me I love, and what are the points of leverage in that, gave me this understanding. As a result of that, I have transformed many, many lives around the world. Just by having people understand, you know, what kind of experience they do want and what kind of a thought connects to that experience and just literally asking them to think that thought a lot. Like I did in my case, when I came to Bali, stressed out, very ill in 2010. Actually, I arrived in Bali on the 26th of January 2010. So it's an anniversary of thoughts. And I created a thought that I'm going to live an extraordinary life where all aspects of my life coexist with joy, ease, and grace. And I just kept thinking that a lot, even before I knew how to do it. It didn't take very long, you know. And within a few months, I was living that life. And it has completely changed. And there was no semblance of that life when I made that choice and came up with this thought. So it did not exist. That experience I wanted. And I wanted to create this belief that, you know, expecting and accepting that it was out of norm. So having all aspects of my life coexist with these grace and joy was an important journey to that. I thought that thought a lot, and I had it. Where did it come from? Recognizing that, that my love for myself, various things that I had written down, and this thought part was provided me a unique, unique leverage. And I... Leverage it. 
in a very concerted way. Find what is your leverage as you go through all that you love about yourself. It's a phenomenal exercise. And like I said, I picked one thing, which is my thought. I have since found so many things that I have worked as a point of leverage that have come from what I love about myself. But it began with just one thing. The sixth move to find your flow is blessings to bliss. Flowing in your flow is an experience of bliss. Hold on a second. And what is it that that delivers bliss guaranteed? It is your ability to count your blessings. And that is what this particular move is. It's the move to start counting your blessings. And this is guaranteed. You really don't, you know, all your, literally, you place the order, I want to experience bliss and start moving. You know, move along steadily, continuously, you know, in a current, in a stream of blessings. Bliss is guaranteed. And literally, every moment we are blessed. Anything could occur any time. And here we are. You know, the he heaven lies in the detail. So find those blessings that you enjoy right here, right now. I'm very present to the energy of this cute little puppy. It's actually a, uh, a stray dog, you know, Catherine, dogs in Bali, right? And people have been saying, They've not seen this dog. But this dog, every time I, and this is the place I usually work from, you know, this dog just comes and sits there. Look at it, I'll show you. <laughs> so, I know, I'm missing wins here. And I'm, you know, to me it's like, okay, I have the blessing of this wonderful dog medicine, you know. <laughs> That's right here next to me. It's so beautiful. Uh, and there you go. You know, I'm experiencing a state of bliss. You know, and each one of you is a little bit infectious. This is the thing. Bliss is infectious. And you can be in a state of bliss just by counting your blessings. So I did a very, very uh, fun exercise. And, you know, I decided that for the next seven days, I know I'm going to leave the house. I have to go out. Before I go out, I'm just going to count my blessings. So I step out in bliss. You know? And it is infectious. It is infectious. Again, language is no barrier at all in this. So create your own strategy. And I do have a blessing treasure tool, yes. Because there are so many blessings that I know I've been blessed with and each one of you is blessed with. And they keep multiplying. The blessings is another regenerative treasure that we have. So a state of bliss can be the norm. It does require a proactive action of finding a blessing. And the best part is as you do the finding your blessing and enter the state of bliss, you reconnect to your own worthiness. You reclaim dignity, something you're born with. And when you are counting your blessings, you're doing it as a matter of conscious choice. The universe is getting a very good education indeed. 
of how you like to work. So it says, okay, I'm just going to reveal some more blessing. Or maybe I should bring her some more this time. It's very cool. I've been doing some games with my grandkids as well around blessings. You know, so they have like, you know, today I got, and they're learning numbers in the process. <laughs> So really enjoy with this one. It's really beautiful move of finding your blessing. And the final move is the move into a state of truth. And really what you're doing here is the, it's like utilizing the key, like turning, unlocking the doorway to peace. That's the move. The move is unlocking the doorway and you enter like a, a the, you know, a palace of peace. And the key is gratitude. The key is gratitude. That's literally to get into this rhythm of flowing in your flow. Make that move of unlocking the doorway to peace with your key of gratitude. Gratitude itself is a pearl of wisdom, and I just haven't had the guidance to do it yet. So we'll see which number it, it comes in as. But gratitude is the key to peace. So if you are, if you really wish to hunt for anything, become a gratitude hunter. Because you then have a whole collection of keys you can use in any doorway. And peace is guaranteed. It's a powerful pearl of wisdom flowing in your flow. You know, peace guaranteed you have the key it's the key of gratitude bliss guaranteed the move is the move of counting your blessings you always have this unique leverage to transform anything just simply by understanding and acknowledging what you love about yourself and you can swoon around being truly madly deeply in love amplifying touching at least 170,000 people with every thought of love that you have, glowing, giving out your steady light, illuminating the world in your full might, moving along steadily and continuously in a steady stream of flow. These are the seven moves. You'll find your flow and you will continue to flow in your flow. Over to you, Catherine. Thank you so much, Minu. I love this idea of being a gratitude hunter. I am ready for that journey. And how beautiful that this 90th Pearl of Wisdom was brought to us from Minu in Bali, which is just all about peace and love and joy. These seven moves that will help us flow into our flow. I can't wait to work with every one of them. I'm like, which one do I start with? So Minu, the question for you is, do they need to go in order or can we pick and choose? You can pick and choose. And my invitation to you would be when you begin, do them in order because you start building up your treasure trove, you know, and you're bringing your treasure trove into your conscious awareness. And then you can just go for it anytime. And I, I love that you um, gave us permission to do them one at a time, because I know so many of us want to just do it all at once. And just the beauty of taking our time with this. Thank you so much, Minu. Thank you all for joining tonight. Have such a beautiful time in Bali, Minu. Will you be there for our 91st Pearl of Wisdom or is it just a short oh, trip? No, I'll be, it's a short trip. It's a short trip. <laughs> okay. I return to we'll India on Monday. 
Well, we will see you in India and we will see all of you right here on Zoom or Facebook Live every Thursday for our Pearl of Wisdom. Next week, our Thank 91st, you. please tune in. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye.